John chapter number 20. We're just going to read one verse. I'm interested in this one verse. Verse number 19. The Bible said, Then the same day at evening, what day? The day he resurrected our Savior. The same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the good singing. We thank you for the good testimonies. Lord, we're thankful to be in church and be able to assemble with your people Lord, it's just a joy, just a thrill to be around like-minded folks where our minds aren't on the things of this world, but our minds are on you. And God, we're certainly grateful that you're a good God and you're a, a present help in time of need and you're a God that's for us, not against us. Uh, you're a God that hears and answers prayer. And God, you're a God of restoration and uh, certainly a God of regeneration. You want to save folks and then you want to restore folks out of your will. And God, you're a God that's always working on us. And Lord, uh, helping us to become more and more like you. And God, we just bless you. We praise you for your excellent greatness. Now help us from the word of God tonight. Use this unworthy vessel. Get glory to your name. Bless those working with the children on the other side. Bless those little children. God, I pray for any that haven't reached the age of accountability. The word of God would be hid deep in their heart. When they reach that age, they'll get saved at a young age. Uh, Lord, I pray for those that have been saved, that, Lord, they'd start uh, growing in the Lord. And, God, those that are not saved but have reached the age of accountability, maybe tonight would be the night of their salvation. Uh, Father, we just pray your richest blessings uh, be with those that are sick, those that are providentially hindered, those that are traveling. But help us tonight to ever draw closer to Christ, and we'll thank you for it. For it's in the wonderful and glorious name of Jesus we do ask it all. Amen. Amen. In this chapter we find uh, uh, Jesus is resurrected from the grave uh, and he has told Mary Magdalene to tell his disciples he would meet with them. Uh, they're assembled uh, 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 together, got the uh, uh, door shut and locked and all of a sudden Jesus appears. Aren't you glad nothing will hinder Jesus uh, from appearing, uh, from meeting with us? Uh, but I want you to notice some things. I'm interested in a thought tonight. Uh, you bear with me. I'm seeing it all over. It's been going on uh, uh, for over a year, but it's still going on. Uh, it vexes my soul and what I'm seeing in churches and even Christians uh, in this day and age. Uh, uh, too many of them, uh, uh, just like we find here, they are panicking. Uh, look again in verse number 19. Uh, the Bible says, The same day at evening, uh, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled uh, for fear of the Jews. Uh, I've never seen a day and age of my 47 years of being saved uh, where people are fearful about being saved. Uh, I mean, folks are afraid. Uh, they're afraid of the virus. Uh, they're afraid of offending a politician. Uh, they're afraid uh, 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 to go out without a mask. And they're afraid to shake people's hands. And they're afraid of this. And they're afraid of that. Uh, 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 the disciples uh, show us right here they were the same way. They were fearful. Uh, uh, of what was going on in their day. Uh, folks are fearful what is going on in our day. Uh, you know what fear shows? Uh, fear shows a lack of faith. Uh, I just believe God's still on the throne. Uh, I believe He's far uh, 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 bigger than us. Uh, he's bigger than a virus. Uh, he's big Let me help you. There's always a virus. Uh, there's always a sickness. Uh, there's always something going to kill you. Uh, hey, these bodies, uh, the moment you took your first breath, were headed to the grave. Uh, what's that? That got to do with serving God. Uh, hey, he deserves our praise. Uh, he deserves our lives. Uh, I, I'm not going to apologize for wanting to serve Jesus. Uh, I've talked to preachers who are scared to death to have church. They need a bigger God. The Bible still says he is well able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we can ask or think. Uh, uh, he honors faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please. You know why a lot of these churches are drying up on the vine? They don't have faith. I was talking to somebody recently. Their church has $300,000 in the bank and they're drying up on the vine because they used to have to live by faith. And now they want to hold on to all that. Yeah, he's talking to the wrong guy. I said, well, what happens if the Lord comes back? Who gets all that money? 
They look at me like, you know, their eyes were uh, sewer lids. The Antichrist gets it. Why don't you get it out? Why don't you get it to missionaries? Why don't you get it uh, uh, over to Fellowship Track League and print some tracks? Uh, why don't you print some Bibles with it? Uh, why don't you get that money out into the world so folks can hear the gospel and be saved? Uh, that wasn't a popular conversation. Huh? People are scared to death. I just believe God's able to take care of me. He's been doing a good job of it. I'll just let him continue. But we see that the disciples... Uh, they were fearful. They were panicked. And many today are, are they're scared. Of, how many of you got loved ones that can't believe you go to church? I'm scared of you're going to church? Are you all wearing masks? No, we're not thieves. Do you all shake hands? Yeah. Why? Because the Bible says to extend the right hand of fellowship. That's why we shake hands. And we'll hug dicks. Uh, and every now and then, hey, uh, 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 Brother James might even kiss somebody if they're carrying a purse. I don't know. But hey. It's all right to enjoy being saved. We see that too many churches and Christians panic. There's something else I see in John chapter number 20. Too many of them are caught up in pleasures. Look with me in chapter uh, 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 21, verse 3. Look at this. It says, And Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. Now hold on a second. Let's just, it's just us here tonight. Let's just wrap our heads around this in the last few days they've had the last supper with the Lord where he institutes the Lord's supper he tells them one of you is going to betray me they all begin to say is it I is it I is it I all except John and finally Peter says hey John ask him who it is and John says Lord who is it John didn't say, is it I? Because John was the disciple whom Jesus loved. Matter of fact, he was leaning on the Savior's breast when uh, Peter poked him in the, in, the, in the ribs. They asked him who it is. Huh? So it's revealed unto him that of the twelve, one of them's a devil. Right. Hmm? And so uh, 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 true uh, uh, to the prophecy, uh, that night Judas betrays him. Peter, James, and John were blessed to go to Gethsemane with him, and he told them, you just watch and tarry while I pray. Uh, and he come back and he rebuked them a couple times because they fell asleep uh, uh, while he's agonizing in the garden. Uh, 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 and then, my dear friends, he's arrested. Uh, he's tried at night, which is against the law. Uh, uh, you find that he's beaten. Uh, you find that he's crucified. Uh, you find that he's buried. Uh, and for three days, there's total chaos going on in their hearts. And then Mary comes running and said, He's not there. He's alive. Well, Peter and John run down to the tomb. They find it just like uh, the women told. He's not there. He's alive. Uh, uh, and then Jesus appears to them uh, 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 up there in chapter uh, uh, 20, verse 19. Uh, and he says, Peace be unto them. Uh, and he uh, says, Receive the Holy Ghost. I mean, and he does a great work there. Everybody's there but Thomas. All of that transpires. Get a hold of this. I don't know about you, but the last thing that would be on my mind is fishing. I mean, Jesus is dead. Now he's alive. He's appeared unto me. Uh, he's saying, hey, uh, 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 you now as the Father sent me, I send you. Uh, and Peter says, okay, I'm going to hit the lake. Now let's bring it to our day. We'll come to the house of God. Man will get up. Man of God will get up and preach the word of God. It'll stir our hearts. Somebody will sing. Somebody will testify. Uh, 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 we get to fellowship. Uh, we enjoy being in the house of God uh, uh, for just a little while. We haven't had our mind on the election. We haven't had our mind on the White House. Uh, hadn't had our mind on impeachment. Hadn't had our mind on gas going up. Hadn't had our mind on everybody buying every salt and every shovel and every piece of toilet paper in the area. Uh, uh, haven't had our mind on going to work. Uh, haven't had our mind on anything but the Lord, uh, hey, our soul gets to burning. Uh, uh, we get stirred. Uh, we go to the house and we say, I want to go fishing. Hmm. You see, what is happening in our day and age, people are panicked. And if they're not panicked, they need something to get their mind off their panic, so they need pleasures. 
Now we know why Peter wanted to go fishing because Peter couldn't forgive himself. You see, uh, uh, that night when Jesus said, one of you betrayed me, Peter said, I'll go with you all the way to the grave. The Lord says, before the cock crows, you're going to deny me three times. Peter said, oh, no, not me, not me, not me. You know the story. Peter ends up cussing. He's a cussing preacher. He's cussing and uh, warming by the devil's fire, and he denied the Lord three times that he didn't even know him. And then when he looked up and he saw Jesus looking at him, the cock begins to crow, his heart melted you see, Peter couldn't forgive himself. At the end of chapter 20, the Lord tells him, Peter, you love me? Yeah, feed my sheep. Peter, you love me? Yeah, you feed my sheep. Peter, you love me? Yeah, Lord, you know I love you. You know all things. Feed my lamb. What's he saying? The Lord's saying, Peter, I forgive you. Now go do what I told you to do. But see, he just couldn't forgive himself. You know, that's some of our problems. God will forgive you, but yet you constantly remind yourself of your failure. Well, see, Peter had to get his mind off of the fact he's not doing what God wants him to do. So he wants to go fishing. He reverts back to the thing he knows best. And so many people, they don't really come clean and do business with God, so they revert back to what they know best. Some of them, they get caught up in all kinds of pleasures. This world's full of pleasures. There's something to get your attention, get your mind off of the Lord. We see some that are panicked, some that are given to pleasures. But look again in John chapter number 21. Too many churches and Christians have succumbed to panic, to pleasures, and some to missing the prescription. Look at chapter 21, verse 22. Peter's wanting to know what's going to happen to John. The Lord basically says, it's none of your business what's going to happen to John. In chapter, in verse 22 says, Jesus saith unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come. In other words, if John lives till I come back. He says, what is that to thee? Now look what he says. Follow, follow thou me. That's the prescription. You know what Jesus has told all of us to do? Follow him. Hmm? follow him don't follow the preacher don't follow Joe Olstein. don't follow Joyce Myers Brother Ray don't follow every wind of doctrine follow him that's what he told us to do follow him you know what you'll never go wrong following Jesus it'll always be good in your life when you're following him Matter of fact, you get in problems when you stray from following Him. Mm -hmm. This is what I want to preach. I'm going to just give you a couple little thoughts. I want to preach on what hinders people from serving God. I mean, God is so great, why wouldn't we serve Him? A lot of times this whole flesh gets in the way. We get off track. But what really hinders people from serving God? I don't know about you, but sometimes I get frustrated. When, when you hear folks, churches being closed and folks not wanting to go to church and not wanting to serve God, not wanting to put God first, and they got all kinds of excuses. I don't know about you, but that vexes me. And then I get to thinking, what's it do to the Lord? Hmm? I mean, you, you, but let's be honest, you get aggravated sometimes when people don't do what they're supposed to do for God. What do you think that does to Jesus? He died for them. He saved them. He's prepared a place for them. What do you think that does to him? Well, what hinders people from serving God? Well, can I say, first of all, people don't serve God because of a fear of man. The Bible says, fear of man bringeth a snare. There are some of you that will not give a gospel tract to somebody. You won't witness on the job. You won't witness to a family member because you you're afraid. Let's just be honest. You're fearful of how they will receive you. Well, guess what? You might have to go buy them a candy bar. Hmm? It doesn't really matter how they receive you. What matters is that you tell them Jesus loves them. Because if they never accept the Lord, it won't be your fault. You certainly don't want 
to see them at the great white throne judgment cast off in the lake of fire and their bloods re be required at your hands because you was too afraid to tell them. If they were in a burning building, wouldn't you holler and scream for them to get out? So many people don't serve the Lord because of the fear of man. That's why so many churches close. They're afraid of what the governor thought. I'm yeah. more interested in what Jesus thinks. Amen. Amen, hmm? Hmm? Yeah. Listen, we're not Muslim. So I don't want you sitting around with a bunch of masks on. Amen. I'll just do that in there. Kind of light the mood. Some of you about to pass out. Huh? I don't care if you wear a mask or not. It doesn't going to affect me. As long as you don't expect me to wear one. Hmm? Huh? I know you'd probably look better with if I had one on, but hey, it is what it is. But some people are just afraid of what everybody else thinks. I'm more afraid of what God knows. Hmm? Some don't serve Him because of a fear of man. Can I say this? Some don't serve Him because of a lack of faith. Where's your faith? Hey, that crowd was locked up in that room for fear of the Jews. And a lot of us are locked up in our churches or in our homes or in our cars because we're afraid of somebody. And then some of us just lack faith. We told you this morning where you get faith, so then faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. The more that Bible you put in you, the more faith you'll have. Hmm? I just still believe God's in control. I believe nothing catches him by surprise. I still believe that he can take my little and do great things with it. Hmm? I just believe God. I know that's not popular today, but I just believe him. Hmm? I just believe he's well able. I'm just trusting him. Hmm? You know, y'all about to die on me. Lord have mercy. How many of you know this? The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So, Brother Clint, if you sit there all night and you think, boy, I don't feel good. Boy, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't feel good. Boy, am I getting hot? Am I getting flush? Boy, uh, did Bella give me the COVID? Uh, you know, you get, to, you, get to, you get to thinking on something long enough, you'll talk yourself into being sick. Hmm? That's what it does. Huh? I ain't even going there. But if you think about it long enough, you'll make yourself sick. I know people are hypochondriac. They're looking to get sick. Huh? Oh, I just don't feel good. Well, Lord have mercy. Any given day, none of us feel good. You get my age, you're just glad you still feel. Huh? What, what happens with people? They have a lack of faith. Since when did serving God, when was it ever based on our feelings? It's always based on our faith in the Son of God. Amen. Amen. When I don't lack faith, I'm able to conquer mountains. Because faith removes mountains. But when I'm not exercising faith, don't take much to throw me out of the way. A lack of faith. It hinders people from serving God. Now let me help you. Don't look down on people. Say, well, so-and-so's not here. so and so Don't look down on them. Number one, you're not in their shoes. Right. Amen. And number two, it's only by the grace of God you've got faith to be here tonight. Amen. Right. Hmm? Amen. That's not your job to judge anybody else. Amen. There's one judge, and his name is Jesus. Amen. Hmm? You know what might help them? Why don't you pray for them instead of talk about them? Right. Why don't you pray, God, increase their faith. God helped them. As a matter of fact, if you spend more time praying for folks, guess what? You'll become more compassionate toward folks. Amen. You won't be cold. Because God resists the proud. But he gives grace to the humble. Because I promise you, neighbor, there's coming a day you're going to need some grace. Amen. I'd rather be found guilty of being one who extends grace than be somebody who's real critical. Because, friend... Those, those chickens come home to roost. Hmm? Uh, some don't serve God because of a fear of man. Some don't because of a lack of faith. Some don't because of folly. Let's just be honest. There are some people that are more interested in pleasures than they are, just like Peter. They want to go fishing than they are serving God. You say, Preacher, what do you think about that? 
There'll come a day. They'll wish they just spent more time with God. And then I thought about this. There are some that don't serve Him because they're focusing on earthly things. Now, let's just be honest. We live in the world. We're only in church about six, seven hours a week. We're in the world a whole lot more than that. And if you're not careful, you are what you eat. You spend so much time in the world, you're thinking on earthly things, all of a sudden you become consumed by earthly things. It's very easy to do. And all of a sudden, you get focused on that so much, you're not focused on Him. You won't serve Him. Hmm? Uh, a lot of churches try to use earthly tactics to try and motivate people spiritually. It doesn't work. Hmm? That's why just about every Southern Baptist church and every feel-good church has a rock and roll band. I got news for you. Uh, I never thought coming to church was you come and you saw ACDC. No. Now, can I be honest? You all know I played ball back in the day. That's why I can't walk. You know what we was listening to before we went on a ball field and ready to rip people's heads off? ACDC. There wasn't anything spiritual about ACDC. Hmm? Uh, you did not want to be in our locker rooms before we left to go out on the court uh, Josh when you all got to Berg and got to inherit them nasty locker rooms we tore them up listening to ACDC bro huh? I won't tell you what we did to the wrestlers match Chloe Beth by the way congratulate her she's going to the state in wrestling yes her huh? the toughest kid in the family well, you're welcome Seth go get James's purse uh, you're never going to use earthly things to become spiritual. Right. Amen. It takes spending time with the Holy Ghost and meditating on the Scriptures and meditating on the Lord and walking with the Lord and praising the Lord in your heart, singing songs, spiritual songs unto the Lord. It takes transforming your mind from earthly things to heavenly things that will make you spiritual. Amen. Mm. You think on the world, look like the world, act like the world, you're of the world. Amen. But if you give yourself to the things of God, you'll start looking like the Lord, sounding like the Lord, and pointing folks to the Lord. Some people do not serve God. They're hindered because they're focused on earthly things. The last thing that causes people not to, you know, that hinders them from serving God is they're out of fellowship with the Lord. Amen. You cannot serve God without being in fellowship with God True. Amen. True. Now I'm here to tell you if mama has a problem with me which <laughs> about every day I give her a reason to have uh, there ain't no fellowship going on it's not good at the foster household uh, how can I be out of fellowship with the Lord and be you know everything be good at God's house you can't you can't Listen, you can be out of fellowship with God and still be related to God. Amen. But it's so much better in your relationship with God when you're in fellowship with Him. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Hmm? Uh, Jesus said, how can two walk together except they be agreed? How can we be in fellowship with God when our mind's everywhere but Him? How can you be in fellowship with God when you've talked to everybody else in the world all week long, but you haven't talked to Him? Amen. Hmm? Uh, I want to tell you something. When we get to heaven, you're going to find out one of the worst things that hurt the church in the latter years is those little pocket computers we carry around that we're supposed to make phone calls on that we don't make a whole lot of phone calls on. Those things consume us. You know what don't consume us? Him. He's standing outside the door knocking. How can we be in fellowship with him when our mind's been everywhere but on him? Now listen, I understand. I understand. You gotta work. You gotta go to school if you're in school. You gotta, you know, live. I understand that. That's why Brother Mike he told us to put our minds on him in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. And if you open up your day with him on your mind, he'll stay on your mind throughout the day. Yep. Right. But if you wait till at night, you've missed the whole day. Yep. Right. 
Start your day out thinking about the Lord. Talk to Him. Read something in the Scriptures about Him. Then start your day. And it'll be amazing how much better your day will go. It'll be amazing how many times throughout the day you're thinking about Him. Amen. Hmm? Yeah. But if you don't start out that way, your day will be gone. you realize, oh, I didn't pray today. I didn't read the Word of God today. I didn't, I didn't talk to the Lord today. I didn't walk with the Lord today. And boy, the day's gone, friend. Start your day out with Him. Hmm? Uh, say, I'm running late. you still got to drive to work. Talk to him on your way to work. Yeah, right. Good. You might find that you might not hit the red lights, or you might find you hit them all. It gives you more time to talk with him. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. But, oh, what a joy to be able to fellowship with him. Yeah. There's nothing like coming to his house when you're in fellowship with him. Hmm? When I come to the house of God and I'm in fellowship with God, it don't matter who sings, who preaches, who testifies, I'm enjoying it all. But if I'm not in fellowship with God, the preaching's too long, the singing's out of tune, and, you know, Dr. Phil, sit down, we don't need to hear from you tonight. Huh? That's our mindset. Hmm? I like it when you go to church and you enjoy yourself so much and then you look at your watch and you can't believe what time it is. Huh? Unlike Thad, who's looking at his the whole service. <laughs> Have you lost weight? Yeah. Listen, it don't take much to hinder people from serving God. If the very disciples who walked with him for three and a half years, who ate every meal with him, who heard every message that he preached, who saw every miracle that he done, if they can get out of fellowship and go fishing the very day he, he, he meets with them, how much tougher is it for us who've not seen him with our naked eyes, who haven't heard his audible voice? Oh, I'm glad we felt his touch. But listen, it's very easy to be hindered. That's why we need to ever be more humbled and spend more time asking him to show us grace and mercy that we wouldn't be hindered in his service and his work. Greatest thing that can ever be said about you is that God used you to impact somebody else's life. There's so many things thrown at us. So many things to try and get us off track. God help us to purpose in our heart that we won't allow anything to hinder our walk with the Lord. It'll take him, but you'll be amazed. You can live a successful Christian life. You can have a wonderful relationship with your Savior. You can feel his touch. You can make a difference in somebody else's life. It starts with everything that you will do already, putting one step in front of the other and putting your focus on the Lord. I pray God helps us to do that. There's too many people panicked. There's too many people not living by faith. There's too many people out there struggling. Why don't we be the, the lighthouse? Why don't we be the, the group that says, Well, look, God's using them. Why can't God use us? Hmm? Why can't God do something for us? He's doing it for them. Now, I don't serve God to get others to look at me. But I serve Him to get others to look to him Amen. see how big a God he really is hmm? he's a good God yeah. and he's able to help you tonight I wonder tonight are you serving him if not what's keeping you from serving him what else does he have to do for you he done shed his blood for you he done save you by his grace he's done promised you a home in heaven he's done been there for you. He's never forsaken you, never left you. What else does he need to do? Maybe here tonight you don't know him. We'd love to introduce you to him. There's nobody like him. And maybe you're here tonight, you know him, but your fellowship isn't right. Well, this would be a good time to get that straightened out. Why? Because there's a snowstorm coming. You may be shut up in your house. You certainly want to be in fellowship with Jesus when you're shut up in your house. Amen. All right, so let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. Maybe you need to come tonight and just thank him for being good to you. Maybe you need to thank him for winking at your ignorance. Do you know how many times I've told the Lord over the last 47 years, thank you for winking at my ignorance? He's a, 
He's a present help in time of need. Maybe you need some help tonight. He's well able to help you. Folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Lord, help me not to be fearful of man or fearful of anything this world brings, but help me, Lord, to live in light of the fear of God. Lord, increase our faith. Help us, Lord, to be mm, true Christian soldiers in this day and age. Lord, help our fellowship to be sweet amongst each other, but even more sweet with Thee. God, speak to hearts. There's many on the altar tonight, Lord. Whatever their need is, help them. And God, just bless folks. Certainly, God, for somebody not saved, I pray tonight they'd get saved. God, get glory to Your name. We'll thank You for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.